Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you're blessed. No matter what your neighbors say, you're blessed. <laughs> Praise God. Revelation chapter 12. We are embarking in a new arena. Of course, there's nothing new under the sun, is there? Hallelujah. The words of Christ are three-dimensional. There's many times when he talks about not only the physical realm, but the spiritual realm at the same time. That's why he speaks in parables. But it's also associated with past, present, and future. Because it's omnipresent. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, this, these words, by the Spirit of God, we can interpret what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us. And only through the Holy Spirit can we truly interpret the time and season what God is speaking of. Amen? Other than that, if we try to understand the Word of God, the manual of God, the training manual, through the carnal mind, sometimes it doesn't make sense or it's out of time or out of season. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 12 and verse 7, would you read it with me? And war what? Broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This was the beginning of the alien race. Hello? This was the beginning of the alien race. And we're hearing so much about aliens and all kinds of things that I want to do a series about the alien race on Tuesday night until the Lord completes what he wants to say. But in the meantime, in this alien race, we see that the word alienate is also has the word alien. Does everybody understand that? And, and in this, they, this alien race was the beginning of separation from God. That's why they're called aliens. They are separated from the will of God his purpose, and his presence. They carry their own. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Then we can go a little further. <laughs> and Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 1, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying what? Repent. Repent. In other words, turn away for the king of sin. Repent for sins. Turn away from the sins. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. These were not flying locusts where he's going to pull them out of the air and eat them. These were known as nuts. That's where the cereal came from, right? Nuts and honey. It started right here with John the Baptist. Praise God. See, it's, it's biblical cereal. 
Hallelujah. In verse 5. Then Jeru and then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Broad of vipers. He knew that they were different. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear what? Fruits. Now, was he talking to trees or was he talking to people? People. He said what? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid at the root of the what? Trees. Now, the trees are representation of bodies, people. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the what? Into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. In other words, Jesus was coming to cut. Uh, he wasn't coming to trim the earth of trees, okay? He was not a lumberjack. He was a carpenter, but he wasn't a lumberjack. He was coming to cut down the trees that did not bear good fruit. Is everybody with me? In Matthew 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in to and buy it. So is it easier to go to destruction or through the narrow gate? Amen? He said, why? Because the narrow gate, the narrow gate is, uh, because the narrow is the gate, and what? Difficult is a way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every bad what tree bears, I mean, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Now, is he talking about people or trees? People. A good tree cannot bear Bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Therefore, you'll know, you'll know their fruits, right? You'll know them by their fruits. Amen? So a tree represents a person. It actually represents a spirit in the person because you're going to know that even a demon, you're going to know the fruits of it, aren't you? And isn't that a disembodied spirit? Amen. And Matthew 13. In verse 18. Let's speak it together. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then what? The wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, immediately he what? Stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Again, he's talking about fruit of a person, isn't he, or a spirit. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Again, person bearing good fruit 
It's associated with not only a person, but the spirit of the person. And Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. In verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Does everybody see that? So when you're getting oppressed, man, start praising. Amen. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that what? They may be called trees of what? Righteousness. These are not physical trees. Amen. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. So we want to be called trees of righteousness. And why? Because we bear righteous fruit. Amen. In Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1. Glory. Psalm 1.1. 1, 1. Would you read it with me? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord of the truth. And he meditates, and, and in his law he what? Meditates day and night. He shall be like a what? He'll be like a what? Tree. A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Shall prosper. He shall be like a what? A tree. Doesn't mean you're going to turn into a tree trunk. You know what I'm saying? Proverbs 3. You may notice that I'm really emphasizing this because when we go to another place, you're going to be solid. Glory. Proverbs 3, verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Wisdom is a tree of life. Well, who's the wisdom? The Lord. Amen? It's the wisdom of God is associated with a tree of life. In Proverbs 15, in verse 3, and we can start at verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in, the, in every place, keeping watch on the what? Evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a what? Tree of life. But perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Everything associated with a tree, associated with the spirit. See, when your spirit becomes contaminated, 
it bears rotten fruit. Amen. Isaiah 55. In verse 10. Isaiah 55 and verse 10. Let's speak it. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth to make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth in singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Are they talking about the trees? No, people. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the what? Myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for the name, for name, and for ever an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. I haven't seen any trees clapping lately. They might be waving occasionally, but they haven't been doing this yet. Amen. Does everybody understand this? What's a tree? It's a spirit of a person. Amen. It's a spirit. Genesis three. Alien race. When Lucifer was removed from the throne of God and from that presence, they became alienated. In fact, why don't we go to uh, Colossians chapter 1 for a minute before we go to Genesis 3. Colossians 1.19. Let's speak it together. For it pleased the Father that in him all the what? Fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him. Whether things on earth or things in heaven. Having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were what? Alienated. And enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed, if indeed, that means you must and I must cooperate. If indeed you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. So you and I at one time were what? Alienated. We were actually considered aliens. Alienated from the presence of God. Alienated from the will of God and his purpose. Does everybody get that? Genesis 3. Alien race. In verse 1. Now the serpent was what? More cunning than any beast. Now. <laughs> beast. Well, you know, it's associated with an animal. Amen. So it was more cunning than any beast. Beasts are also associated with fallen angels. And you'll see it in the book of Revelation. It talks about the beasts. These are fallen angels that, it, uh, that are leading. It says, that It was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now you've got to remember at this period of time that Adam was ruler. And he was ruler of the earth. And even the angels were subject to Adam. And a woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the what? Trees of the garden. 
But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Hmm. First of all, I want to start out with the Hebrew name, word of serpent, which is associated with snake that hiss. It's whisper, magic spell, puts a trance, practices divination, deceptive, also known as a beast. Distinct of Christ's character, animalistic, survivor, killer, de de defensive, and vicious. That's associated with serpent. So, uh, in other words, there was a tree, but it was actually known as a bati. It was a spirit. It's called a tree of knowledge of good and evil. But it was actually not a tree. There's no such thing as Adam and Eve eating an apple. It's not even in the word of God. They didn't eat a banana, a pear, or anything else. Amen? So, in this, know that these trees were associated with Spirits, God is speaking in parables, which is associated with a parallel, physical, but spiritual. So the serpent, so we see that it was a body, the fruit of the tree, which produces, can also mean to lie with. Lie with women, sexual act, to touch, lay hand on. She said, we can't even touch it. We can't lay hands on it. Is everybody with me? Then was the serpent said, he said, then the, then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. That's the first time he lied, isn't it? You shall not die. So he lied. That's why he's known as the father of lies. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Wow. In other words, the moment you lie with me, you will be lo what, like God. Does everybody get this? What was he doing? He was enticing her. He was enticing her to lie with him. He said, if you lie with me, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Why? Because you will be able to reproduce like God produces offsprings, like he created at you and Adam. Hold on. The moment you lie with me, you become like God, a creator of offsprings. Of course, again, he's the father's life. There are also many, uh, there's also a meeting, it's, it's called A-W-T- S-A-W, it's a Hebrew word, and it means to close your eyes. So in this, he was attempting to get her to lie with him so that he could produce offspring and to close her eyes, never able to see again the spiritual realm. Is everybody okay? So what happened? It says then, so when the woman saw that the tree, the spirit, in other words, when she saw it was enticing to her, she desired it. It was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of it. When you take something, you possess it. You partake. It even says that when that, when the, uh, when the angels that left their abode, what did they do? They came down and they took wives, didn't they? It's the same thing. So when a woman saw that the, that the tree, the spirit, was enticing for food, was pleasant to, uh, to the eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now, again, this is not an arena of eating a fruit. They never ate a fruit. They never ate anything. They partook. Does everybody in this? She lied with him. Why do you think everything now is associated with lust? Everything. So, again, her eyes were closed and so forth. Pleasant to eyes, desire to take pleasure, creating an appetite for lust. 
She took of it to partake, laid with, possessed. And, and, and then the Lord comes, right? And, and so let's finish the rest of this here. And so um, then the eyes of both of them, because she gave to her husband, the eyes of both of them were open, right? In other words, they were closed spiritually, but they were open physically. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, made themselves covering. And they heard the voice of the Lord because they no longer saw him. Walking in the garden in the cool of the day, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Among the trees of the garden, among the spirits in the garden. And then the Lord called to Adam like, hey, man, where you at? Like he didn't know. And he said, I heard your voice because I couldn't see you anymore. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. His power is fear, right? And the Lord said, who told you that you were naked? Have you partake? Have you eaten from, uh, from the tree which I command you not? to eat or touch. Then a man said to the woman, the woman whom you gave me, with me, she gave me of the tree. She introduced me. In other words, she introduced Adam to sex. This was not a fruit. And I partook, I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. That word deceived is actually called beguiled. Beguiled. That means seduced. When you go to the true translations and the Septuagint, you will find out that the, some of these words that we have now must be interpreted by the spirit of the living God. Because there's a many things in the meaning of this word. God's word is true. But we don't have the book of Enoch here either, do we? And there's many confirmations in the book of Enoch. Many translations. And so the serpent, she said, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent did what? Seduced me. And she introduced sexual activity to Adam. And the, so the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust. In other words, where did Adam come from? Dust. He was expressing you will go, you'll be just like man now. You won't have authority. And what else? And you shall eat the dust in all the days of your life. And I will put what? Hatred between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Now listen, this is powerful because the Lord saw something. She carried a seed of the serpent. That's why he was able to say, your seed. He saw her seed in her and he saw Adam's seed in her. And he said this, he said, he shall bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Why? Because when Jesus was on the cross, his feet were nailed, weren't they? Is everybody okay? Jesus' heel, Jesus heel was nailed to the cross. God saw that Satan, um, would destroy, uh, Satan would be destroyed by Jesus, didn't he? But he also saw the seed of Satan and the seed of Adam in Eve. Is everybody all right? Praise God. Now, look at this judgment on the woman in verse 16. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your what? Conception. Why? Because she partook of the fallen angel. Mm. And in pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband now, <laughs> and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of the 
which I commanded you, saying, in other words, what was that tree? What was the fruit of it? Lust, sexual lust. Because you partook of it and you heeded your wife, she convinced you to partake of this. Curse is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field in sweat of your face. You shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, and for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the woman of all, all, all living. What? All living. Uh, anything that came in from the serpent now and from Adam. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, now let, 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 let's just go a little bit further. Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Why? Because he killed an animal, didn't he? Blood for blood. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil, to know about perversion. Now, did God know about it? Of course he did. Was he trying to prevent it? Yes. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life. Well, who was the tree of life? Jesus. And eat, partake of it. What did Jesus say? He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood is what? Eternal life. And live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. For he drove, so he drove out the man and he placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden in a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. He said, you're not going to live forever, man. I can't have this. Is everybody okay? All right, let's go a little bit further. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Genesis 4, verse 1. Now Adam knew his wife was pregnant. Adam knew his wife was pregnant by uh, Samael, which means Satan. And if you look up in the Arabic and in the other translations, you'll see that this is exactly what it says. Well, who was the child? Cain. Cain was like the heavenly, this is what it says. Adam knew his wife was pregnant by, the, by Satan. Cain was like the heavenly beings and not like earthly beings. Eve saw that, um, Eve saw that she had been gotten and she said something about, I have begotten a man from an angel of the Lord. Watch this. Now Adam knew his wife was pregnant, she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have required a man from the what? Lord, it's actually angel of the Lord. Then she bore again this time and her, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn and his flock at their, of their fat and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I? Did he lie? Yeah, he knew where he was. Am I my brother's keeper? So you see the fruit of it already. Murder and lying. Why? Because the seed of hatred was already there. God already said, You're gonna, your seed's going to hate my seed. Cain hated Abel. He couldn't help it. That was his inheritance. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. All right, and um, 
And in verse 10, he said, so uh, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall, I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on him. It was known as the mark of the beast. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should what? Kill him. And then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. She conceived and bore Enoch. And that's not the Enoch that we talk about. This is another one. And he built a city and called the name of the city and so forth. So we see that Cain went out. Cain actually became a giant. And produced giants afterwards. Um, why? Because he was the lineage of the bloodline of alien race. Does everybody get it? Go to 1 John chapter 3. Cain was marked as the Antichrist family. They hated the seed of God, didn't they? And it's still going on today. 1 John chapter 3. This is the alien race. First John chapter 3 and verse 10. And let's read it together. Well, let's start at verse 7. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the what? Of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was what? Manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, does not allow sin to have dominion over him. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as what? Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. In other words, he was the first offspring of Lucifer. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Cain, who is of the wicked one, Satan's first offspring that was marked by God, he became a giant. In Genesis chapter 5, that's where we have the Cainites and so forth. This is a book of genealogy of Adam in the day that God created man. He made him in, in, in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Of course, when they fell, they were no longer in the character of Christ, were they? No. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness. In his what? His own likeness. Does everybody get this? After his image and named him what? Seth. Seth. Wow. And after he begot Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years and he had sons and daughters. Man, can you imagine 800 years and watching your family multiply? What a family reunion. <laughs> so all the days of Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Seth lived 100 years. In five years and begot Enosh. So, again, we see that where it says that 
Seth was the only one that was in Adam's image. Never mentions Cain, does he? No, because he was not Adam's son. He was Lucifer's son. All right, let's go a little further. Genesis 6. So we see that the multiplication on the earth was continuing. In verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God, which are associated with what? Angels. Saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. And they did what? It doesn't say that they took an ape, right? It says that they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. Where did those giants come from? Cain. Why? Because isn't Lucifer a fallen angel? Did he not partake with Eve and produced offspring? And there were giants in those days. And also after when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. So about 200 other fallen angels put on flesh, left the presence of God, left their abode, and they took on flesh and produced offsprings. Well, look at, they weren't going to do that unless they saw Lucifer first do it. Does everybody get it? These were giants, um, of course, there were giants in, in those days and also afterwards in the Son of God. These, those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. That's where we get all the mythical things of Zeus and so forth. They were uh, imitating his gods. Then the Lord saw that the, the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of their heart was only con evil continually. Why? Because now we know that this has been going on for four or five hundred years. All this reproduction of, of offsprings, they were called Nephilims, and it was continuing on. So you got Cain and his family line, and then you have when the 200 fallen angels came and their family lines. For four to five hundred years, continue to go, and the Lord said, that's it, I'm done. I'm going to kill you all. And so the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds, and so forth. And again, when these angels put on flesh, they not only went into women, they went into animals. That's where you got half man and half animal. Everything was contaminated. There was continuously evil in their thoughts. Everything was about sex. Everything was perverted. Everything was lust. Everything was about it. Look what the fight is now. Isn't that the fight all the time? In an arena of lust. Pornography and all these. Look at the devil promotes now. I mean, when I was a kid, you couldn't go to a phone and watch some of this stuff. I think the only way you can watch anything is if your dad had those books or somebody else's dad did. Other than that, there was no sign of it. Hallelujah. So again, Cain's lineage, they were called Cainites. They were giants in those days, and then the other 200 angels came and continually produced offsprings. Go to Jude, book of Jude. Is the alien race. Now, I want you to understand that they came with technology, didn't they? Amen. Jude. You know, sometimes our peanut brain has a hard time grabbing hold of us because we've been so programmed for so many years of our life. We've been born in deception, born in darkness, blinded to true reality of what's really going on. And I want you to know, they are here now. They're here now. What do you, why do you think everything's being removed? They've come out of more than the closet. I mean, come on, we got transgender bathrooms now and all kinds of stuff. 
And who's promoting it? They are. You got sports athlete, athletes that decide to wear dresses now? I mean, who told you that? Who told you that you're a girl when you were born a man? Who told you that? Now, you know what they're doing? They're in other countries now, I think it was in France or something, that they're giving children a choice at the age of four and five of what gender they want to be. In Europe. Okay, what gender do you want to be? Oh, let me look. I don't know. I don't know what I am. I mean, it's crazy. Why would you give a child four or five years old a choice of who you want to be? That's an impartation of a demonic seed. Here, flip through the pages. Which one do you want to be today? Just No, just look at the pictures. That's all. Which one do you want to be? You want to be a boy? You want to be a girl? Some of them, they're just going to be both. Talk about bringing confusion to kids. And what does the word say? The word says that a millstone be put around your neck for causing one of these little ones to stumble. People have no idea what's getting ready to happen and what we're heading into. Jude 5. Everybody there? He says, but I want to remind you, though, you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their what? Proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to what? Sexual immorality. And gone after what? Strange flesh. Well, females are not strange flesh. Animals are, though. Are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, even contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil what they do not know. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, these are the offsprings now. In these things, they corrupt themselves. He said, woe to them, for they have gone in the way of what? Cain. And have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit and perish in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feast while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice Dead. Why are they twice dead? Because when God killed them in the flood, they became what? Their spirits became demons, and they will be twice dead. Pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars. What's a star known as? A angel. For whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Again, in this, the alien race is here. In fact, after so many, uh, so many thousands of years, they look human. Does everybody get this? But they are the seed of the serpent, aren't they? In John chapter 8. 
I'll explain that in a second. Now, after my visitation from the Lord, the first time I saw my ex-wife, she called me an alien. But to her, it was because I had departed from the way of the world. So I am an alien to the world now. Amen? Oh, that's a whole other thing behind that. <laughs> Praise God. 837. Let's speak it. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do with what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth. Yet I which I have heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the what? Devil. Devil. The desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Whoa. So we see he's the, and we see that continuing, isn't it? And Matthew 13. In verse 37. And Jesus answered and said to him, He who sows the good seed is a son of God. I mean, son of man. He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the what? Is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. So what's he saying? They're here. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. How did he sow the seed? He's not talking about seeds that are going to grow sunflowers. These are offsprings. Amen? The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. The reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear. So we see that they're here now, aren't they? They're with us. They're among us. Even some of them are proclaiming to be Christians. Even the devil comes as an angel of light. And, he, and it says that, and even some of them are saying that they're righteous ministers. But truly behind closed doors, they're not. The serpent seed line is a collective term that includes all those who are the direct or indirect offspring of Lucifer and fallen angels who have interbred with mankind for over 6,000 years. It's called the alien race. And I want to close at 1 John chapter 2. And we'll continue on the series as long as the Lord wants, unless he wants to stop. Because I think we're going to go to some wild things. First John chapter 2, verse 15. I believe this gives more understanding as you begin to see the scriptures. What does it say? Look at verse 15. What does it say? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Does everybody get that? Why? Because then the love of the other Father is in them. 
For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the, come on, read it with me. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So that means it's the offspring and the love of the Father known as Satan or Lucifer, the devil. And the world is passing away in the loss of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and if you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. So when a believer falls from Christ, he rejects the family of the kingdom of God and goes back to the father who is a murderer and a liar. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because who you serve when you die is where you go. So if you become a child of the devil again, that's a person's choice. Remember, the word said that we're to continue. That's why it's important that we constantly make sure that the mind of Christ is what? Activated. It says, whoever denies the son does... Uh, the son does not have the father either. So what about a, a believer that rejects Christ after walking with the Lord and walks away and denies him? It says it right here, whoever denies the son, does he deny? Look at when, when, you, when you walk away from the Lord and, and live for your own life, are you denying Christ? Yes, you are. He says, then you don't have the father either. Well, then you got another father. He who acknowledges the Son is the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise that he's promised. What? Eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. Break, cause you to disconnect cause you to not activate the mind of Christ, cause you to drift, cause you to walk away from the true father of creation and into the father of deception. Amen? He said, but you, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So that's why it's so important that we abide. And we not only abide in prayer, in word, in praise, in worship, but in fellowship. That's why he says, forsake not to assemble. Look how much more, the more you, the more you come and you worship and assemble, you stay more refreshed longer. You're able to overcome other things. You're not easily swayed. Why? Because you come and drink, you get filled with the Spirit of God and you take it out. Why? Because what you sow is what you reap. What you speak is what you eat and what you eat is what you become. Amen? Does everybody get it? Praise God. The alien race. Thank God we're not, we're a peculiar race, but you know, we're not, we're, we're aliens to the world. Oh, wait till you hear what they're going to try and do. But praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. <laughs> Continue to open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to follow, that we may have revelation, illumination, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to stand strong in the things that are happening now and prepare us for the things that are coming, that we may see all the way through the physical realm into the spiritual realm, exposing the works of the devil and rescuing those who have been taken captive by deception. Lord, we thank you. I pray blessing over each and every one. I ask you to protect that seed that's been imparted tonight so it will grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Be blessed. Not stressed. <laughs>